So we're going to keep this thing moving. And here it goes. Remember when you ran away and I got on my knees and begged you not to leave because I told the sir? Well, you left me anyhow and then the days got worse and worse and now you see I've gone completely out of my mind. They're coming to take me away, haha. -ha. They're coming to take me away, ho ho, hee hee, ha ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats on their cons and I'll take me away, ha ha. You thought it was a joke and so you laughed. You laughed when I had said that losing you would make me flip my lid. Right? You know you laughed. I heard you laugh. Remember when you ran away and I got on my knees and begged you not to leave because I told the sir? Well, you left me anyhow and then the days got worse and worse and worse. You see, I've gone completely out of my mind. You see what happens? They're coming to take me away, ha ha, they're coming to take me away, ho ho, hee hee, ha ha, to the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats and they're coming to take me away. <laughs> you thought it was a joke, and so you laughed. You laughed when I had said that losing you would make me flip my lid. Right? You know you laughed. I heard you laugh. You laughed, you laughed, and laughed, and then you laughed. But now you know I'm utterly mad. They're coming to take me away, ha ha, they're coming to take me away, ho ho, hee hee, ha ha, to the happy home with trees and flowers and chirping birds and basket weavers who sit and smile and twiddle their thumbs and toes and they're coming to the There we go. <laughs> you found that stop button, huh? Finally found that damn stop button, bro. I think you hit repeat first. <laughs> That's just a nice, polite way to say I'm fucking crazy. And uh, I had a crazy week last week. Last week was fucking crazy. And it was the last week of uh, mental health awareness, which made it even more crazy. Uh, it started off Tuesday. I was doing a stand up at another place. And uh, they had three women sitting at the bar and the, the stage is maybe, two and a half, three feet away from where they were sitting. And it wasn't even a stage, it's a flat floor. And every comic struggled through these women just sitting there talking. So my smart ass walks right up to them and says, ladies, what's so important that y'all talking about that y'all talking over the comedians and we can't even hear ourselves think? And they're like, oh, well, we're just seeing who's got the longest hair and this, that, and the other. They were so oblivious, they didn't even recognize I had a mic right in front of them. And I put the mic right there so the crowd could hear what they were saying. And I was like, oh, that's so important. Y'all talking about, you know, whose hair is the longest, this, that, and the other. Maybe y'all could uh, go to the bathroom and do that, you know, so the comedians, we're not disturbing y'all. And uh, they're like, well, well, you got a nice long beard. How'd you get your beard so long? and still oblivious to the fact that I've got a microphone and I'm right in their face. And I said, well, I'll tell you how I got my beard this long. I eat a lot of pussy. <laughs> and they were like, oh, really? I was like, yeah, and after the show, I'm giving away free mustache rods. So if y'all, you know, wanna hop on, see me after the show. And then, Moving to Thursday, I'm here every Thursday night, been here every Thursday night for about four months now. And uh, I had a young lady tell me that I was racist. And I'm like, wait, what? I'm racist? And I told a joke about me wanting to marry an Asian lady. And I'm like, thinking to myself, how, how is that racist? And she just kept yelling it over and over, that's racist, that's racist. Usually I would have just ripped into her, but since it was mental health month, I was like, you know, I'm gonna be nice. I was like, just calm down. It's only comedy. So that's gonna bring me to my next bit, which is Comedy Ethics 101. The comedian's job is to sit here and tell you a joke or a story. And there's a lot of different humor. There's dark humor, 
There's uh, juvenile humor, you know, you tell dick and fart jokes or whatever. Uh, you have satire, you have physical comedy. So some, some people might find comedy offensive. But what you find offensive, this person over here might not find offensive. So the thing that offends me the most is people that are offended. And um, with that being said, you know, uh, talking about crazy stuff that has happened, you know, my mom, she was crazy. Crazier than a shithouse rat. And that's one of the reasons why my grandparents raised me. So I would go to my mom's house over the weekend, you know, kind of like a uh, like a father would get you um, for the weekend if if you're part of a divorce situation. Well, I went I went to my to my mother's house, and she was more like a friend once I got older. But you know, she tried to act like a mother when I'd go see her. And I remember being about 10, 12 years old. She she had just gotten a new brand new TV when TVs were big and huge, they looked like furniture. And I brought my Atari 2600 over there, dating myself here. It's like uh, the old school Xbox for any of you young people. Um, so I told her, I said, Mom, I'll hook it up, I can do it, I can do it. I did it on the old TV. She was like, nah, new TV, you ain't, you ain't touching it. So she's behind the TV with the screwdriver. And, um, when I moved here to Texas, I found out that Mexican moms are crazy too. They, when the kids are acting bad, they have those uh, things they call, I might pronounce it wrong because my Spanish isn't that good, what they call it, the um, chonca, the chonca, or whatever, the flip flop, and they throw it at their kids, hit them in the head, and they usually bounce it back like a boomerang. Well, my mom, I told her, I said, hurry up, I could have had this done already. My mom threw, she stood up from behind the TV and threw a screwdriver at me. Me being smart, I ducked and it hit the wall and stuck in it. My mom's like, flies over the TV. She starts beating my ass. She's like, look at what you made me do to the damn wall. <laughs> I can't make you do nothing. But then she taught me uh, how to uh, go to the movies. She would always bring a big old purse. She would bring a big, big purse. And she would never buy us any concessions. She would bring, you know, we'd stop at McDonald's or Burger King. We'd have two meals in her purse. Drinks, shakes, fries, super size, the whole nine yards. So, fast forward, I went to the movies last week and I'm looking at the prices of this, uh, all these concessions and I started thinking about, you know, my mom, how she taught me how to sneak stuff in. Because these prices of uh, concessions at the uh, movie theater, that's high as giraffe pussy. And I'm not trying to fuck it, I'm just trying to get some Mike and Ikes and some, some Skittles. So I'm going to start bringing a purse to the movies. And if the, the usher gives me any shit, I'm going to be like, um, what do you mean I can't bring a purse in here? He goes, well, you're not a woman. I was like, how do you know I'm not a woman? I might be able to identify as some, you know, people identify as all kinds of things. You know, I identify as somebody who ain't paying these fucking high ass prices. <laughs> and my pronouns are, I'm cheap as fuck. That's all I have for y'all tonight. Thank you guys. Don't forget to tip your waiters and waitresses. The more you drink, the funnier we are. All right, y'all give it up once again for the comedy styles of Big Red. Connor, I need you to see me at the DJ booth. Connor, see me at the DJ booth.